Hey folks, Nick Corbertson here, and today we're making a synth app for iOS using AudioKit and a hundred lines of code. A hundred lines of code. Let's get started. Actually, before we get started, two quick things. Number one, I'm releasing a new synth app called Overdrive Synth for iOS on October 12th. The app is a multi-sampler AUV3 synth that aims to answer the question, what does a synthesizer sound like through an overdrive pedal? Keep an eye out for the app in the behind the scenes video that'll release the same day. Ping! Number two, this example today is a nice starting point for a vintage style analog synth. The Mini Moog was the first portable synthesizer and it established the foundational ingredients for analog synths. I thought it might be a cool idea to make a vintage style analog synth using audio kit, but that's gonna take a lot more than 100 lines of code. So if you'd like to see that, let me know down in the comments. Anywho, this is a light 100 line version of that idea and all the 100 lines of code examples are on GitHub. Let's see how far we can get with this one. To start, I've imported some extra libraries this time. Key Keyboard and tonic for the keyboard, sound pipe audio kit for the oscillators and effects, and controls for the knobs. First we'll start out by setting up a synth class with our audio engine instance and we'll create an array of morphing oscillators. In previous videos we used a sampler for our sounds, but this time we're using oscillators, specifically audio kit's morphing oscillator. It's morphin' time! This is a good one to use because it allows us to change an index to shift between waveforms. This is also going to be a monophonic synth, but we're mixing together three voices, two that are slightly detuned and another that is shift down an octave. The index value will change the waveform and we can detune them slightly to have a thick sound. Our main voices are blended between a triangle and a square wave and the octave down voice is between a sine and sawtooth wave. Alright, so now we'll create a state object variable for our class and add a keyboard to our layout. We'll set the piano's pitch range to be two octaves, but we need to create some methods for our note on and note off. Now when we refresh the view, you'll see we have a keyboard on the screen that responds to key presses. And I think this is the first time I'm showing off Audio Kit's new keyboard package, which allows you to do all this stuff in a single line of code. It's really cool. We can give the view a similar treatment we did with the other examples with the background gradient and add a spacer and a max height for our keyboard. These are the sort of easy trivial tasks that you can really get lost in like raking a zen garden. Not that I've raked a zen garden, but what I imagine raking a zen garden would be like. Next we'll create our init method where we'll physically toss the three oscillators into a mixer and start the engine. We'll create a separate struct for our oscillators data with an is playing variable, a frequency variable for our notes pitch, an octave frequency variable for our bass oscillator, amplitude for the loudness, and ramp for the duration of the glide speed between notes. In our main class we'll create a publish variable for our data and observe changes to this variable in did set. Now if the data is playing we will start our oscillators, increase the amplitude, and set the frequency or pitch of our oscillator with one of them being set to the lower octave frequency. Then if is playing is false we'll set the amplitude to zero. Now in our note on method we can do the actual changing of the data's variables. We'll set is playing to true, set the frequency of the MIDI notes pitch, and shift the bass oscillator down an octave. Then in our note off method we'll toggle off the is playing boolean. Or in layman's terms you push a button it makes a sound, take your finger off, no sound. Why not just say that? This example might sound a little complex at first but it follows the implementation of most the oscillators in the audio kit cookbook. I don't know about you, but I think that sounds really cool. All right, next we can add our octave and note range variables and apply those to our keyboard's note range. Then we'll add some buttons to increment or decrement the octave or range. Yeah, that's a cool word. Notice when a lot of keys are on the screen, the touch point kind of lags. This is because SwiftUI is redrawing the keyboard every frame. No me gusta. To fix this, we just need to move our keyboard to another view and embed that one instead. So I'll add a new Swift file called SwiftUI Keyboard and we'll populate it with our keyboard that we can pass values to. Now back in our main view, we'll replace the old keyboard with the new one that looks exactly the same, but now it isn't being redrawn every frame. The more you know. The next thing our synth needs is a low pass filter. If you're using Apple Sampler, there's a built in low pass filter, but for our oscillators, we're gonna use Soundpipe's Moog Ladder. Apple also has an AV audio unit EQ that might be a nice alternative. In our init method, we'll pass the oscillators to our filter and our filter to our engine's output. We'll create a cutoff variable that we'll use to set the filter's cutoff frequency whenever it's set. Now we need a way to change the cutoff, so we'll use the controls package's small knob and we'll set the binding value to our published cutoff variable. Now when we turn the knob you will see and hear it change the cutoff frequency.
I noticed that the initial value is different, so we'll add that in our initializer. And now whenever we open up and start the app, it should be at the right place. In the simulator, I can hold shift when I click to create a pinch gesture, and you can use this to have two touches at once. Next, we'll add some labels so that we know what the value is and what it is we're controlling. And there you have a variable keyboard with three oscillators and a low pass filter and just under 90 lines of code. Now this is a bit ambitious, but let's see if we can add an amplitude envelope to control the instrument's attack, decay, sustain, and release. I'll make an instance variable of Soundpipe Audio Kit's amplitude envelope and pass it our filter's output. Then when we create our envelope, we can set the ADSLR values in the initializer. We need to make a few changes to how we play the sound, so in our note on method, we will open the envelope and close it when the note off method is called. And finally, we'll pass the envelope to the engine's output. You can hear the amplitude envelope, but it is ignoring the release because we didn't remove all the is playing logic. So we'll take all that out because we're not gonna need it anymore. Now the amplitude of our oscillators is entirely controlled by our ADSR rather than setting it in our data's did set method. So you should still hear the note sustained after the key is lifted. Awesome. Okay, so we actually have less lines of code now because we removed all that is playing stuff. Let's see if we can add some knobs for our ADSR control. This is just like setting up the filter knob, only this time we will be binding to the values of the envelope. All right. The knob is working, but it isn't updating right away, and that's because we need to publish the envelope so that we can see the changes on the screen as they happen. So we'll add at publish to our envelope and run it again. And we have a spinny knob. Now I return to my Zen Garden as I duplicate these knobs. The Mini Moog actually had ADSR controls, only it doesn't have the sustain in there, I believe, or the release. Maybe you can use the decay as the release. But I do know that they have a second envelope in addition to the amplitude envelope, and this one controls the filter. It's how you get those whamp, whamp, whamp sounds. You can also use one of the oscillators as a low frequency oscillator, which is good for adding dimension and movement to the sound. It's probably the worst definition of an LFO ever, but just go with it. We've got everything set up and working now, but we're a bit over our line limit, so I'll remove our ramp duration variable. That saves us about one line, and I'm actually gonna add a bit more code here that allows us to reopen the envelope anytime we hit a new note, instead of it just being legato, I think is the term that they use. Legato in the sense of an envelope would be that the envelope opens whenever you push down a key, and then it's going to stay in an activated state until your last finger has come off the keyboard. The alternative approach is that you close and open the envelope every time a new press comes on the keyboard. And unfortunately, we have to call our envelope open on delay because if you close the envelope and open it right away, it just ignores the event for some reason. Basically, it stays open. Maybe this needs to be fixed in Soundpipe or maybe we're just not intended to use an envelope this way. Either way, we're almost done. All right, but what can we cut? Aha, okay, let's remove the range control and set the keyboard to two octaves. Then we will remove that variable and scroll down. Hot dog. We have done it again. We have a working synthesizer and a hundred lines of code. All right, let's run this sucker on the iPad and get out of here. Thanks for watching the video, folks. I knew this was gonna be a fun one for me and it did not disappoint me. I don't know if it disappointed you. I'm gonna to return to these 100 lines of code examples in a few weeks, but I'm taking a little time off just leading up to the launch of the app, Overdrive Synth. Check it out, tell your friends, tell your mothers, and tell your mother's friends. Next time we're gonna work on a, a fun, light one. It's gonna be a little bit lighter. It's gonna be synthy. Come nerd out about synths with me in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Red lines of gold